This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. It's 10 a.m. I'm Jay Fidel here on a given Thursday, and we're talking about Amoresco today. Amoresco's new project, projects, we'll, we'll get, get further detail on that in a minute. Sure. <laughs> okay, here on a, a given Wednesday. Tomorrow is the is the uh, event, however, and we'll talk about the event tomorrow at Pacific Guardian Center. Okay, let me introduce. We have two executives uh, from Amoresco, which is a national company, Ron Haxton, um, and also Ron Haxton and Wyeth Crawford. Will you guys say hello? Hi. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. So we want to talk about Amoresco. We want to talk about the deal with Chelsea Group and okay. our friend George Bender. Uh, we want to talk about what you're doing at Pacific Guardian Center. Um, and um, in general, uh, we want to talk about uh, where you fit into the future of energy, energy efficiency in Hawaii. Okay. And the present. Okay. Also. So, Ron, uh, what's your situation with uh, Amoresco? Okay. So, I've been with Amoresco about six years. I'm the Northwest Region Vice President. So, I'm responsible for our business in, uh, besides Hawaii, Oregon, Idaho, Washington, and Alaska. Uh, I reside in. You didn't mention California. No, just uh, as well. We, we we treat California <laughs> in a, in a different region. <laughs> so, um, I'm from the Northwest and lived in that area most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, Amoresco has been around since about 2000. Uh, started in Boston and specifically focused around energy efficiency projects. Uh, and then in the in the time since then has grown to also include distributed generation, um, microgrids, or some of the latest technologies. Uh, a so lot it goes of, beyond just classical yes. energy efficiency. You're into energy technology, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and of course, the, uh, the start of the business was around performance contracting projects that pay for themselves with their utility uh, savings. Um, but that has, it's been around and it's been very popular and it's been very successful in, in most of the country. Um, but we see the, the ability to help our clients and help our customers just as much, if not more, by helping them provide distributed generation. PV is what people usually think about, but there's also other avenues and other ways to help them address oh, their oh, energy needs. You're piquing my interest. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I want to know more. Um, what about you, Wyatt? What do you do? Uh, I was the former vice president of Chelsea Group, and I took over as the director of the Hawaii office of uh, Amoresco. So essentially uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by training and, and education um, and now I'm running the local office with all the same same people and uh, a lot of the same sort of work with new resources and so we're looking at some new types of projects and some of the things that Ron has talked about we're trying to expand our uh, offerings here. So, we're on, uh, Amoresco is a, is a national company. Correct. Uh, tell <clears throat> us about the size and scope. Um, sure. Tell us about, you know, its uh, national uh, characteristics. Sure. Uh, Amoresco, headquartered in Boston area, um, about 1,100 employees, mostly in the United States, uh, also in Canada, um, England, and some other countries here and there. Uh, we have grown mostly through various acquisitions. The the group that I work for specifically, the Northwest, grew out of a company that was acquired in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have, then we look for opportunities of existing businesses that might be a good fit for what we do to either expand our business through already established customers and clientele or to expand our um, capabilities through skill sets that we might not have. So you're, you're in an acquisition model, you've acquired uh, over the past few years. And now most recently, at least here, you've acquired Chelsea Group. Uh, yes, Why correct. Chelsea Group? What interested you about Chelsea Group? Sure. Uh, when I sat down with George earlier this year, and we were originally just talking about using Chelsea as a consulting engineer, um, Amoresco is, a, is independent in that we don't, we don't make widgets. We don't um, have a whole bunch of engineers on staff to do engineering. We usually hire that out. And so we, when we met, uh, it was to talk about that potential. George 
talked about everything that Chelsea does and their process, and it was a mirror to the, almost everything that Amoresco does. Amoresco does more in that we are also a general contractor, so we will build the project. We can find financing. We you offer, say build a project. You mean build a building or build uh, energy systems within the building? Energy systems within the building. Our projects are usually around retrofits to make buildings more efficient, so we'll do the work that we develop, the projects mm -hmm. that we develop. We saw a very strong alignment in what Chelsea offered. You know, George would tell me what he does, and I would say, wow, that's the way we do things. And, <laughs> and that went on, and he finally said, we're for sale, do you want to buy us? So we, we saw a, a very- great moment. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a good fit. It, it was, you know, I could literally plug everybody into what we do with very little difficulty. But we also saw the options to enhance what um, the Chelsea Group had done down here because they had some, you know, some guidelines that they worked with and, and we could then, if a customer had some difficulty, whether it was financing or having someone to do the work, we could offer that and, and help them get more done. We just saw a good fit, established business, um, people that are passionate and, and care about the direction that Hawaii is going. And, and we saw an easier way for us to help Hawaii get where it wants to be yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Did you know at the time that uh, George uh, studied philosophy in college? No, he, he uh, kept that from me, <laughs> a true philosopher. Among other things. <laughs> okay, so your, your position, well, let me, let me go uh, and look at it from the side of Chelsea Group. How was the deal to you, Wyatt? It was actually really exciting because one of the things that like Chelsea Group has offered, you know, design and commissioning and construction management and uh, assessments and that kind of stuff, but we don't ever, we didn't ever have the opportunity to really get fully hands-on and control a project as the true prime. We oftentimes acted as prime, um, as more on the owner's rep side, but having the, the, the general contractor's license opens up a bunch of doors. Having the, the financial backing of, uh, of, of somebody that can help uh, uh, get those performance contracts and things like that actually financed, it's a way to move forward projects that are on a scale really unlike anything that, that Chelsea Group by itself could uh, mm -hmm. uh, sure. handle. Performance contract is a contract where your compensation is based on your success? It, it's essentially a, a guaranteed savings where we do an assessment, we look through a, a, your building systems and say, well, we can save you, say, $100,000 a year. Uh, you pay us, say, $70,000 a year, and then you, you can actually set up a, a situation where from the very first day of the project, uh, it's net positive for the, the building, so there's no out-of-pocket money. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of a, it's an interesting uh, a vehicle that's been around since, I think, the 80s or maybe. Yeah. Late 80s, yeah, early, late 80s, 90s, early 90s, or, sometimes in there. But it's something that you kind of have to have both the, the smarts to set up the project and then the financial backing to be able to front all that Right, because you got to put the money in. Yeah, and so that kind of stuff we couldn't really, um, we couldn't really handle a, as well. Um, and then additionally, the uh, Chelsea Group is a relatively small company. You know, we're 12 people in the office right now. Um, and, uh, as opposed to 1,100. Yeah, as opposed to 1,100. <laughs> so there's this, this vast wealth of knowledge of experts that we can actually pull from. And so it's, it's really opened up a lot, of, uh, a lot of avenues for us, a lot of uh, assistance. Um, another thing, uh, uh, George used to work in the government, and so he refused to do government projects. <laughs> So, uh, wise man. <laughs> yeah. so now uh, Amoresco already has the logistics and everything set up so we can actually bid on the government oh, sure. work. Um, it's so, an administrative issue. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all just, you know, which, uh, which, which problems do you really want to deal with? And yeah, he really, wasn't, yeah. wasn't a big fan Am of Am I those. right to say that when you do um, uh, this kind of um, what performance contract, um, the, the estimator is really important? For sure. He's got to be able to see or she how this building is operating, uh, what it needs, uh, and, and what it would cost to get there, and, and crank all that in to the proposal. Huh? Yes. And, and that'd be an engineer most of the time? Yeah. Um, so actually at my previous work, former life, I did build a performance contract that, uh, so yeah, I've had all that experience of uh, going through, and it's, it's pretty, uh, um, it's a little scary at times, because it's just, you're making these guesses, and then the, you're, you're promising on, Putting well, money on the educated line. guesses, yeah. I don't want to just say everything, but yeah. but you, you're you're stating a promise that has to still be true in ten years or thirty years. Um, 
So you have to really do your homework. You have to really understand the systems. And it just takes a lot of uh, effort on the front end to build these that type of project. Ten years or thirty years? Are these contracts that long? Mm -hmm. They absolutely oh. are. Oh, you know, I I always saw this area, especially with the high rise buildings downtown, um, and my law firm represented a lot of them over the course of my career, um, as a, a ripe pomegranate. What I mean is, uh, these buildings were built at a time when maybe the technology wasn't so mm -hmm. mature as it is now. And uh, you need somebody to come in and look and apply the, the new science, apply the new technology. And when you do that, lo and behold, you find tremendous savings. How do you see this market run? Well, just exactly like you said, it's uh, <laughs> aging infrastructure. Uh, we see it every day. Equipment has, even uh, if it, it was the best equipment at the time that they put it in, there are much better options that we can find. So, it, and you're exactly right. Um, I think the the, the market is ripe for a lot of turnover in equipment. We can help them select the, the correct equipment, as in many cases, when they were originally built, it was usually low first cost, so maybe not the best. Value engineering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best, maybe not the best material selection uh, for longevity in, in a salt air atmosphere. So those are some of the things we can address. And just the sheer improvement in performance on equipment over the past 20 to 30 years makes it uh, prime opportunity for these self-financing projects. Now what about looking at it from the building owners and managers point of view? Um, are they are they willing to go this step because you know they have existed sometimes 20, 30 years on you know band-aids uh, and you guys sure. come around and say we can we can fix this and we can give you a guarantee and a promise and all that. Um, are they agreeable to that? Are they um, are they likely to agree uh, to to have you come and, and make a make a proposal? I'm talking about the managers and I'm talking about the owners, two separate questions. Sure. Well, we see a wide range of reaction from everyone top to bottom. Um, there are some owners that have always been very forward thinking and always look for the best alternatives. They're obviously more likely to go that direction. Um, other ones are, are more complacent to go with the cheap fix or a cheap solution and are less likely to look for the, the best way to go. So we try to convince everyone and show them the reasons why they should go. At the end of the day, it still is a financial decision that they have to make. Sure. So often it's, it's on us, our developers, uh, our engineers, to show them it's not just the right thing to do for Hawaii, but it's the right thing to do for your long-term financial outlook also. Can we talk about the pass-through for a minute? Sure. So in these tall buildings right around here, and I, we'll ask about what other buildings you might want to do, but... Um, it's all passed through on operating expense. You know, the cost of operating the building is all passed mm -hmm. through, including electrical, you know, usage, electrical rates, what have you. So if, if uh, you can save me a dollar um, on electrical, on my electrical bill for the building, it, it goes to the benefit of, of, the, uh, of the tenant. Sure. Because the pass through is less. And I suppose that's a marketing point to get my next tenant, but it may not be that much of a marketing point. On the other hand, if I stay with the old and I don't change anything, uh, the tenant doesn't, he doesn't have a reaction to that. He doesn't know the difference, that I did not reduce it, I just left it the same. Uh, how does that play? Because I think a lot of managers would say, hmm, we'll just leave it because the tenant's not complaining. Sure, sure. No, and we do encounter that, so we will see various uh, reactions, and it usually depends on the building type. If it's high-end, um, commercial real estate, then the building owners will recognize there's value to them and value to their clients in having that better quality and better performing building and something that they can advertise. Sure. So the way he presents it, isn't it, to, to the tenants? Yes, yes. Uh, they, they market that. They, they tenants, should market yeah. it. Yeah. And they can also, if you have someone that is in the mode of, of development and construction, then they will market what is coming and that will help them pre-sell the building so that they're operating more on cash than right. on the loans. And it shows when, when the landlord markets that, it shows the tenant, the landlord is progressive, the landlord yes. believes in technology, progress, efficiency. It's a statement of a state of mind as far as that capital concentration is concerned. We're going to take a short break, you guys. Okay. We're going to come back. We're going to ask Wyeth about the technology. <laughs> we'll ask you both about the okay. technology. That'll be the big payload here. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs>
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, then who is? Live above the influence. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. I told you we'd come back, but I also to talk about the engineering, but we're gonna hold up on the engineering. We're gonna talk about one thing that came up during the break and it's the tenant attitude about green, right? Yeah, so one of the things that we've seen a pretty remarkable shift in the past, you know, just, just uh, eight years or so uh, of how much effect the, uh, the pressure to be environmentally sound and sustainable has had on the whole industry. Tenants and it's, care, people care. It, it really is something that people care about and people in Hawaii really care about it with the, the 2045 100% uh, renewable energy goal. Um, so that pressure in itself has actually caused a number of buildings to uh, make uh, make movements that they wouldn't sure. otherwise do, simply because it's it's very uh, desirable for buildings to be highly energy efficient, and people like seeing those lead plaques. They like seeing the, the um, Hawaii Energy Project of the Year plaques and the yeah. uh, things like that. I can just see that letter that goes to the tenants in January or February which talks about operating expense and reconciliation at the end of the year and all that. And it says, you know, we have Amoresco now, and uh, we're going to save money on energy. It's all worked out, but more than that, we're going to be green. You want to be green. We want to be green. The state has to be green. We're realizing the destiny of the state to be green. Um, and I think most tenants, 99% of the tenants, really like that, really like that. It's mm -hmm. a tremendous selling point. Because it means that, you know, both the landlord and the tenant are participating, you know, in mm -hmm. this... Uh, aggressive thing. So let's talk about engineering. Let's talk about the equipment. So I'm a building, okay? And uh, you come to me and you say, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, deploy new technology in your building. What are you going to deploy in my building? So uh, the first thing we've got to look at is where are you using energy? Because uh, from the most efficient standpoint is just turn everything off, right? That's, that's what we care about because the efficiency we're talking about is largely economically driven. So it's, I want to lower my monthly bills. Your lowest monthly bill is zero. I turn everything off, everybody goes home. But we can't do that. So we've got to look at your lighting. We've got to look at your uh, process loads. We've got to look at your, your air conditioning. And those are kind of the, the main things that a building has. Um, actually, plug load is something that used to be a, a very pretty significant por portion of a building, especially an office building. And it's come down quite a lot because of you know, LEDs and, and the More fact that, equipment, yeah, yeah. New, new TVs and just the things that people wanted, those got changed out really fast for other reasons. You don't see CRT uh, televisions anymore because, not, not because they're inefficient, it's because nobody wants them. Mm. So uh, with a light bulb, you know, as long as it's putting out light, nobody really cares what it's using. So first we have to make things visible to uh, people that where their energy is going and where this cost is. And then we look at the, usually they start off with a low hanging fruit, which for the past few years has been lighting. Um, going, uh, LEDs are now cheap, they're very efficient, they're very high quality light, and they're just a, a no brainer. Um, uh, beyond that, the next, like uh, the, the biggest single chunk for a building like this uh, would be your AC load. And that's probably anywhere from 40 to 50% of total energy usage in the building. And there we'd look at new chillers, we'd look at new uh, cooling towers, we'd look, look at... Would you look at seawater air conditioning? Uh, seawater air conditioning is something that, that you could look into. Um, uh, there's, uh, like, the technology is, is great, but uh, it's hands down the most efficient way that we know of to produce, or produce cooling. Uh, the, the only issue is the economics of it have to work as well. You have to connect it up. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the cost benefit of, of getting the... the, the plant installed and everything up there to your building. So it, it's, it's not a, one of those things where it's just, you know, 
uh, a no-brainer where everybody should do it. You got to look at the at the um, <laughs> you got to look at the financials. Otherwise, you might end up being that other type of efficient where you know you run out of money and everybody does go home and turn everything off. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen. Yeah. So um, there's one one last question. Um, about that is um, you, you talked about gathering data. That's really what mm -hmm. you've been talking about. And uh, I mean, some buildings, I suppose, would have that data ready for you. Here, Wyeth, hey, we got it all right here. We got it. Here's a thumb drive with all the data that you ever want to know about. Other buildings aren't going to have that. And so you probably have to bring in a little black box over time to get, what do you do? So that's happened to me about once in my <laughs> career that somebody actually was able to just hand over all the files. <laughs> a couple other times I've been able, they've had a, comp, uh, a competent BAS, building automation system that has good trend logs and whatnot. Um, but for the most part, data that I, I gather in the field is largely suspect. Um, and the only suspect. thing worse, <laughs> yeah. The only thing yeah. worse than no data is bad data, because then you think you have You're something. You're being deceived. Yes, and it's just it's just all lies. <laughs> so what we do um, on that side, especially for per performance contracting, where it's really important, we have to know what they're using so that we can prove that what they what they save. Um, we put in temporary data monitoring, or we will actually upgrade their building automation system to uh, so actually, a continuous flow of data. Yeah, so you always know. Yeah. In fact, you can look at it remotely, can't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the, there are a number of plants that I can log into on my cell phone. Yeah, that, well, that's the modern way. So <clears throat> we get the data, and now we understand this building. We mm -hmm. understand you know, how well or not so well it's doing with its existing equipment. Um, and now you have to crank that into a business model somehow. Correct. You have to take this data and put it on a spreadsheet and, and compare it with other data you know, that's in the model. Uh, how do you handle that, Ron? Where, where does it go from the time the tenant the landlord gives it to you. Sure. Uh, and one of the things we do before we do our investigation into the building is we'll sit down with the owner and ask them what are their parameters that's going to make a project work for them so that we know what their targets are for payback uh, in various investments. So we'll always have that in mind when we're developing the project, but what we'll usually do is come up with a longer list of things that we can do than they want to do. But then we'll sit down and we'll plug in different numbers into our model, show them what the financial outcomes are, and arrive at the best overall solution for them. I, I can see this uh, working kind of like a, on a, 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 a modeling basis, uh, mm -hmm. an if-then basis. Yeah. Um, if you want to save X dollars, you, you take one from column B, column C, <laughs> column D. If you want to say, save two X dollars, take more columns and so forth. And if you really want to go the whole route, take all the columns. Don't do nothing, we'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> essentially. Another thing that it, it enables people to do is uh, a lot of buildings have what's called deferred maintenance. It's stuff that they were supposed to fix long ago, but they band-aided it together, and it, there's not really any energy savings in replacing it, but it's just something that needs to go. Um, like, like boilers are a common one because they're, uh, they're a large energy user, and they're not actually that, like when they degrade in efficiency, they don't go that far from new. Uh, they're not very efficient to begin with and they're not very much worse. <laughs> so it's hard to replace on an on a, uh, energy efficiency standpoint. But if you have a great big energy efficiency contract, then you can pay for that by actually wrapping in a bunch of your deferred maintenance and just you end up spending a little bit more than you would, but it's still you know, no day, money out of the pocket. Updated on yeah. everything, yeah. So you what can about the new. notion, and this just occurs to me, what about the notion of putting solar on a rooftop and using that to generate electricity mm -hmm. and using that to run a chiller? Uh, is the, that being done? The biggest problem with that is simply the energy density. So in general, buildings like this one has a very small roof footprint compared to the, the cooling load. This one being Pioneer Plaza. Yeah. So, um, yeah, essentially, if you put all the solar that you want that you could fit on the roof, just even even built out to where you're hundred percent of the square footage up there, you would not have enough energy to run your chiller, and you still need to be tied into the grid because you still need that cooling when you're off peak load. So sure, you got to have the backup. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in general, uh, while we're big proponents of solar and installing it, the idea of isolating your systems and tying them into like this solar panel is tied to this piece of equipment is generally, uh, it's not as advantageous as going to uh, just tying that solar panel to the whole building, into the whole building mm -hmm. and treating it all as one, one thing and looking at the, how the whole thing Ever works. Ever do that? Yes. 
And do you use batteries when you do that? Uh, we haven't had any battery installations yet, but we're really trying. It's, it's, it depends it's on battery right there. technology. Yeah. And, yeah. and Amoresco has done some projects where we yes. look at PV generation, we combine it with battery storage and microgrid technology to control the consumption of the electricity and the distribution of the resources. I want, yeah, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned earlier, sure. there's a list there somewhere. There's a list of, of goodies, of techno technology goodies sure. that, that you can discuss with a, with a client or a prospective client. By the way, footnote to that is, um, my guess is that when you have a new technology, you, you come around and say, hey, we got a new technology. Let's update your system with the new technology because we can save you more money. And mm -hmm. you get a rider on, the, on this performance contract that way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so my question to you, Ron, is what else is on that list? Uh, we talked a little bit about PV. We talked sure. about monitoring devices. Uh, we talked about, you know, the classical um, large building devices. But what else is on the list that, that you would propose? The, the things that we're looking at these days with clients are how can we generate electricity? And again, PV is a, is a typical, but there are other ways, whether it's a, um, a renewable gas, which could be gas that's captured off of a, a, a landfill or some sort of wastewater plant. You can use that gas to, whether you're running it through a generator or some sort of gasification to generate. Um, but also additional ways to store energy, whether it's uh, pump storage using water, whether it's batteries or flywheel technology. And then um, the next level is really what is commonly called microgrid, which involves multiple layer of monitoring and controls and really actively monitoring every single bit of your consumption and adjusting what's turned on and what's turned off and even modulating levels up and down so things are running slower than they, mm. um, they, they might always it's, run. It seems so, so clear. I mean, like, it's the old European hotel thing. When you leave, the lights go off and you, yeah. know, you come <laughs> yeah. back, you have to put your card in, the lights go off. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it goes far beyond that. The, typically, the challenge is implementing the level of controls and the, and the programming and being able to write the programming so that the, the intelligence exists automatically um, to modulate the systems up and down. And so, it can... <laughs> Amoresco is going to use its experience mm -hmm. in other places when it designs a system, say, here, right? Yes. And <clears throat> does Amoresco actually, I, I'm sure you're looking at best practices and best connections for deployment all the time, but do you actually design um, equipment? Do you design algorithms? Do you design, you know, grid adaptation, uh, which you use in this city, then that city, then this city? Yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> what we typically do is um, we stay on top of the available technologies as the people develop them. We don't, we don't make anything, but we are always have our eyes out for what is working best. So as better technologies are developed, and people come to us because they know that we're going to sure. connect sure. them with customers. Well, you're a good market. Yeah, and, and we'll evaluate them and help them maybe improve their performance. Um, and we will write the preferred sequence that we want things to operate so that the, the people that are providing that equipment, whether it's a high efficiency chiller or a system that's going to control those loads, they know how to write the programs and the algorithms to control it the way we need it to, mm -hmm. to provide the savings mm -hmm. um, and the ultimate performance. You know, Wyeth, you're, <clears throat> you're a guy who undoubtedly, as I would if I were in your shoes, I'd look at every technology out there. You know, get all the trade journals, <laughs> uh, all the popular mechanics for big buildings journals. <laughs> I, but what's coming down the pike that excites you that maybe Amoresco will use in the future? Honestly, this microgrid stuff gets pretty cool once you, like, um, it, it, it's not so much about a, the specific technology that's exciting, because it's largely the same thing that we've used for a long time. It's good chillers, it's efficient pumps, but it's, it's better good chillers. controls. It's better this and better that, right? Well, it's, it's, it's not even so much that. It's the whole control of the whole system and playing with uh, your loading and unloading and, and storage and, and discharge and uh, all these different technologies. You can actually use a whole bunch of them to accomplish one common goal. And that's one thing that that it, it, it kind of reflects the whole, you know, what is the, the answer to energy uh, as a whole problem. 
And the answer is there is no magic bullet. There is no single solution that works for everything. We can't just sit down and say, all right, we've got this widget and that will solve all of our problems. It turns out it's got to be smarter than that. It's the software. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the thought it's behind it. It's the software it. where you have uh, adaptable software. You're mm -hmm. sitting in the Amoresco office, uh, the building's over here, you're getting the data and you make some changes or the program makes some changes. Yep to adapt it better and better to achieve better performance standards. Yep. We're almost out of time, so Ron, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Where are you going? Where are you going in terms of the kind of properties, the, the location of the properties, uh, the kind of installations you want to do on those properties sure. here in Hawaii now? Okay. Yeah, uh, that was one other thing that attracted us in Chelsea's client uh, base, predominantly private owned. Um, like Wyeth said, George stayed away from, from government. Our typical core work is in government. So we want to uh, expand the work that, that the Chelsea Group had done with their private um, and, and talk to them about doing microgrids and distributed generation. But we also see opportunity to help, whether it's the utilities um, on the islands or the, the building owners in, in looking at their buildings from a holistic perspective and really considering what their options are. There is many opportunities for us to help people um, and I don't necessarily see a limit other than the number of bodies <laughs> and, and the time in the day. As far as I'm concerned you're here at exactly the right time because people are more and more aware. I, I tell you I sit on the Hawaii Energy Policy mm -hmm. Forum. Um, people are more and more aware of the 2045 uh, goals um, and uh, the, the community is uh, more of one mind these days uh, they're not so much arguing as finding collaborative solutions. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a great time to be here. I agree. Thank you, Ron. Thanks for coming down. Really thank appreciate you. it. Wyatt, thank you for coming down. I'll see you guys at your... Um, future of... Future of... Uh, future existing of buildings event tomorrow. Tomorrow <laughs> at, at, uh, at Pacific Guardian Center. Thanks so much. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. <laughs>